Today we're going to look at the question two from the 2010 AP Computer Science A exam. So please go on to my website here. I put the link in the description and here's where I have all the free response question files. So you're going to need this file, the uh, CSA 2010 PDF, and then you're also going to need this apline.zip, which is question two. Okay, so here's the PDF and we're going to take a look at question two. This is pretty straightforward. You just have to write an AP line class. So what I want you guys to do is read through this question, make sure that you understand it. And I'm going to go ahead and write the code for this. So when you un unzip that uh, AP line.zip file, you're going to get a BlueJ project folder that looks like this. And what we're going to do is open up this AP line file. So you're going to get AP line.java right here. And then now we have to go in and just write the code for this. It's a pretty straightforward question. It's actually uh, one of the easier questions that the AP Computer Science A um, people have put out over the years. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to go ahead and write the class. And you know, for most of you who are pretty experienced at this, you should have a good idea of how to write a class. The three major components, right? First component is you need the instance variables. They tell us, you know, it has these uh, instance variables A, B, and C. Then you've got a constructor, and then you've got the methods. So as long as you can get those three components in place, then you should be fine. So let's do the first one where we actually have to write the, you know, the instance variables. So that should be pretty easy. So start here, with, you know, and then the thing about these instance variables is that they're always declared private. Now a good thing, you know, rule of thumb is that, you know, everything is declared public in Java except for the private instance variables. So those are the only things that are declared private. All right, anyway, so we get this private int A, private int B, and then private int C. That's it, so we've just declared our three instance variables. So the next thing we need to do is we need a constructor, and I think they do mention that you, know, you need to just have one constructor that has three parameters. Okay, so we need to set these um, instance variables using that constructor. So let me go ahead and do that. So public AP line. Okay, so now I need to um, decide on some names for this uh, these parameters. So you know you could pick a bunch of things, I guess, but you just gotta make sure you don't pick A, B, and C because that gets confusing. So I'll just do this, just say int one, int two, int three. Okay, you know, you can basically pick anything you want, but one of the sort of errors I see is that, you know, sometimes students put A, B, and C in here, and then, you know, it gets very confusing as to what's a parameter and what's an instance variable. So just pick something decent and then you should be fine. Okay, and then I just set these equal. So, you know, A gets the value of one, B gets the value of two, and C gets the value of three. Okay, so there we go. So we got uh, instance variables done, we got the constructor done. Now the last thing is we need to get the methods. And I think in the question they mentioned there's two methods we need to write. So we need to do a get slope method and then we need to do the is online method. So with the get slope method, basically, you know, you, you have these two values, the, the two um, instance variables A and B. If, you know, they have this relationship, then, you know, it returns whatever slope there is, so just a simple divide. There's a small trick here, and I'll, I'll walk you through that. Okay, so this is going to return a double, um, you know, just looking at this, I see that the output's gonna be, you know, a, a number with a decimal component, so that tells me it's a double. Okay, so you have to look for little clues like this, because I don't think they explicitly tell you that it returns a double. You have to figure that out on your own. Okay, so let's go ahead and code that up. So I think we have, you know, public, it returns a double, and it's called get slope. All right, so I'll make a variable to say double results. Um, so I can pretty much just put this equation in, right? I mean, just the simple equation, minus a divided by b. But there's a small issue here in the sense that when you have um, a divide like this in Java, it does an integer divide. So you actually have to force uh, a decimal divide using, you know, there's a technique that you need to do. You need to multiply it by 1.0. Minus 1.0, 1 
times A divide B. So that will force the decimal divide rather than an integer divide. Let's return result. Okay, pretty simple. So that is the get slope method. So the last thing is this is online method. So basically, you know, if we have um, a series of values for A, B, and C, um, it's it is on the line if uh, you know this equation gets um, evaluated as zero, and you know if it does not come out to be zero, then it's not on the line. So this is going to return a boolean. It's basically where we just have to figure out this equation, determine whether it's a zero or not, and then you know return a boolean based on that value. All right, so this is going to return a boolean. So public is online. Oops, public boolean is online. And this is actually going to take two parameters, right? Because um, I think they do mention it in the sense that, you know, oh yeah, is online has two parameters, x and y. And you know you substitute those in, and then you should see the result that you get. So essentially, what we need to do is implement this equation: ax plus by plus c gets zero. So okay, let me put the x and y in. So in x and y, and let me just make a variable. So I'll call it a boolean results. Set it to false. And now I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to write this equation and it's going to return an int. So let me go ahead and say int solution. Okay, and it's that uh, ax plus by plus c equals zero. So what I need to do is just say, okay, well, a times x plus b times y plus c, right? There's the equations, you know, figure out if that's a zero or not. So that's going to be, you know, what I put into results. So I say, okay, well, result gets, and then I'm going to say, okay, is solution logically equal to zero? So this, right? And then once I've done that, I'm just going to say, okay, is solution log logically equal to zero? So if the result is true, then that gets put into this uh, variable false, then it, you know, that's what gets put into this uh, variable. So I just return result. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Looks like it compiles. And let me go ahead and see if it uh, works. Let me hit compile here. Okay, looks all right. Run this. Put on line true, you know, slope 0.625. On line false, slope 0.72. So these are some sample values that I put in. I think this is correct. But let me make uh, one more check. So I've got the JUnit test bench here, so I just have to run tests and see if everything works out. And when I run tests, I see that you know I get all green checks here. So I suppose that uh, this. Okay. Anyway, I see that you know all this. I have all green checks here. Therefore, this is you know a fine. Program, so it works quite well. Okay, so that's the conclusion to this particular um, code session. So this was AP Computer Science A, the um, 2010 exam question to AP line.